Hey everyone, it is Ed Gatowski, and what I wanted to do today was to create a lecture which we talk about the next step in the phase of our understanding of rhetoric and argument. So I've read all your discussion board questions, they've been fantastic, I've loved where class has been going. So uh, even though our class likes to use the word persuade as part of their definition of rhetoric, I'm still going to maintain my definition of of rhetoric as words used to manipulate, to deceive, and con people. But what we're going to do in today's lecture is we're going to talk about the next step in understanding rhetoric because there is something that rhetoric always uses that an argument will avoid. And so, in order to get this, in order for this lecture, you may want to read over in our textbook here, you may want to read over chapter five because chapter five will help us to understand the next step in rhetoric and argument. And this lecture is going to talk about fallacies. And so fallacies are something that rhetoric always uses that a good argument will avoid. So, um, so I, just, I think it's important for us to understand how fallacies work. And I think sometimes students hear the term fallacy, they panic. They think fallacies are going to be hard. They think they're going to be confusing. They may not even understand what fallacies are. But in many cases, fallacies can be really easy to identify. Some of them are silly, and some of them are just plain dumb. So what I do if I was in a ground class is I would write down the word fallacy on the board, and I would ask students, okay, based on the word fallacy, what do you think this term means? So uh, if I just say the word fallacy, think about what the first thing that comes to mind. And most students, what they can do when they hear the term fallacy or they see the term fallacy, the first thing that comes to mind is something that's fake. So a fallacy might be something that is fake or something that is false. And so I will define fallacies a little bit different because I define fallacies merely as false logic. So if we just basically take a second and accept my definition of rhetoric, which is words that are used to manipulate, to deceive, and con people, and we go out into the real world and we come across someone that is using a fallacy. Someone that is saying something that's false or saying something that's fake or using false logic. Well, what happens is our brain starts to critically think and rhetoric has less of an impact on us. So I think there's a reason why we might want to understand and identify various fallacies. So I think in our textbook, I have listed maybe 17 or 18 fallacies. So if you look over chapter 5, anywhere between, say, pages 81, and I'm going to give or take on mine, going up to about 95, there's between 17 and 18 fallacies. So, you know, one of the fallacies that I always like is I like the ad hominem. And an ad hominem is when you attack a person's character rather than addressing the issue. So an ad hominem is when you attack a person's character rather than addressing the issue. So notice, imagine there's an imaginary student who just hates my class, right? And that he goes over to campus and he starts yelling, don't take Professor Gatowski's class, he's just like Hitler. Don't take Professor Gatowski's class, he's just like Saddam Hussein. Don't take Professor Gatowski's class. He's a real son of a bitch. Well, notice what that student did was he used an ad hominem, right? He attacked my character rather than addressing an issue, right? He, he compared me to Hitler. He compared me to Saddam Hussein. And he called me a son of a bitch. He didn't really address any issue. He didn't say, don't take Professor Gatowski's class. He doesn't always respond to emails. Don't take Professor Gatowski's online class. It's confusing and hard to understand his modules. Instead, what he did was he attacked my character. So I always like the ad hominem. The second fallacy that I always th like is a non sequitur. And a non sequitur is when you take two things that have nothing in common and you're trying to join them together. So you take two things that uh, have nothing in common and try to join them together. So that same student might say, you know, don't take Professor Gatowski's class, it's just like Auschwitz. Don't take Professor Gatowski's class, it's just like Dachau. Don't take Professor Gatowski's class, it's just like being trapped in a concentration camp. And notice, that is a classic non sequitur, right? Because no matter what you think of my class, it has nothing to do with uh, a concentration camp. And I think the reason why I like these two fallacies is I see them all the time, right? They're used all the time in the political arena. And, you know, so I think it's really important to identify and to recognize 
how those two fallacies work. The other fallacy I really like is I like the bandwagon because the bandwagon is so easy. Everyone else is doing it, why aren't you? Everyone else is taking Professor Gatowski's class, why aren't you? So um, those are three fallacies that I like. I think they're interesting and we see them all the time in the real world. There are two other fallacies I'd like you to pay attention to. One is um, paralipsis and one is equivocation because I'm very interested in how those two fallacies work. So what you're gonna do is uh, after you watch this video, you kind of looked over the fallacies, there's gonna be a discussion board that basically just asks you to pick the fallacy you find the most interesting and why, and then pick the fallacy that you think is the worst and why. And then as the weeks go, we'll kind of shift to our understanding of how fallacies work with rhetoric and argument. So I look forward to seeing what you have to say on your discussion boards.